you carried it all, oh God. You are literally the burden bearer, oh God. You are the heavy load carer, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We lift your name on high. We will forever praise your holy name, oh God. El Shaddai, Adonai, oh God, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. You are the God who sees. You are the God who reigns. You are the God who restores. Restore us now in the name of Jesus. Revive us again in the name of Jesus. Restore us again in the name of Jesus. Don't lift your hand off of us, oh God. We need you now, oh God. We pull down on heaven. We pull down on heaven now. We need you now, oh God. We need your spirit, oh God. We need your restoring power, oh God. We need your love, oh God. Grace and mercy now in the name of Jesus. Joy now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We praise your holy name, oh God. There is none like you in all the earth, oh God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity, oh God. We don't take it lightly, oh God. Some of us, we have lost, oh God. But we thank you for another breath, oh God. We thank you for another breath, oh God. We thank you for another opportunity, oh God. Grace and mercy now in the name of Jesus. It's because of God's grace that we're not consumed. It's because of your grace that we're able to walk in it. It's because of your grace that we're able to answer to the call. Lord God, grace now in the room in the name of Jesus. Stir yourself now. Open up to the God who delivers you. Open up to the God who died for you. Open up now in the name of Jesus. Stir yourself now. Whisper sweet nothings to him. Let there be a sound in the room. Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, we honor you. Lord God, we adore you. Lord God, we thank you and we praise your holy name, oh God. Lord God, thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for your blood, oh God. Consume us now, oh God. Revive us again, oh God. Consuming fire in the room, oh God. Anything that is not like you, oh God, burn it out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that you don't operate in our time, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you operate outside of time, oh God. Lord God, you are the covenant-keeping God, oh God. So even though if you have not done it yet, we know that you will, oh God. Lord, increase our faith now. Lord, increase our faith now, oh God. We dare to believe it, oh God. We dare to believe that it will happen again, oh God. Lord God, give us a reminder of who you are, oh God. Give us a reminder of who you are, oh God. Whenever we forget, let's not we forget, oh God. Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, we worship you. Lord God, we adore you, oh God. They abandon you, oh God. You can relate to us, oh God. Even when we feel alone, even when we feel abandoned, even when we feel rejected, you are the God who sees us. You will never reject us. You will never abandon us, oh God, because you love us, Lord. Thank you for your love in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your unconditional love in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we worship you now, oh God. We lift our hands up, oh God. We open our hearts up to you, oh God. We open our mouths with praise, oh God. We open it up with adoration, oh God. Lord God, touch every seat here, oh God. Keep the people that are on their way, oh God. Give them traveling mercies, oh God. Lord God, touch the pulpit, oh God. Touch every child in this house, oh God. May they minister with the fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you reign. You dwell here, oh God. That's what this is a house based on prayer, oh God. And we will pray ourselves through in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for communication directly to you, oh God. Lord God, we don't take it lightly, oh God. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the direct communication, oh God. Thank you for your listening ear, oh God. Lord, thank you for the voice of God in the name of Jesus. Touch every instrument. Touch every chord, oh God. Touch every person that touches this pulpit in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we lift up our pastor up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Let him have a rhema word for us, oh God. Let him have a dunamis word for us, oh God. Let it not fall under deaf ears, oh God. Lord God, let it pierce our hearts, oh God. Lord God, let every person that leaves this house, oh God, never be the same in the name of Jesus. Lord God, don't let us hear the word, but allow a heart transformation right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let us never be the same, oh God. Lord, let us never be the same, oh God. Let us never be the same, oh God. I felt that. Let us never be the same, oh God. We desire to walk differently, oh God. We desire to talk differently, oh God. We desire to walk differently, oh God. 
oh God. We desire to talk differently, oh God. Lord God, all we want is you, oh God. We don't want nothing else, oh God. All we need is you, oh God. All we need is you, oh God. All we need is you, oh God. We don't need the houses and cars, oh God, because it's nothing without you, oh God. It's nothing without your spirit, oh God. It's nothing without your presence, oh God. It's nothing without your grace, oh God. It's nothing without your mercy, oh God. It's nothing without your love, oh God. It's nothing without your strength, oh God. Lord God, supernatural strength in the room right now, oh God. For those that are weary and heavy laden, he will give you rest in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, oh God. We receive it now, oh God. It is in the mighty, hallelujah, matchless, oh my God name of Jesus we pray Lord God we thank you oh I'm trying to end it Lord God we thank you it is in the consuming fire in the name of Jesus it is in the love of God we pray oh God it is so and it shall not be otherwise Lord we thank you Lord we usher you in in the name of Jesus Lord God we receive it now oh God let us not be the same oh God Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Stir up the gifts in the room, oh God. Lord, let there be deliverance here, oh God. Let there be strength today, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit reign and walk the aisle, oh God. Lord God, if there is fire in their bellies, let them open up their mouth and speak in their heavenly language. Lord God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for speaking in tongues, oh God. We will not be ashamed of him. We will not be embarrassed of him. We will not apologize for lifting your name, oh God. There are people that are not allowed to to do this freely oh god we thank you for the freedom now oh god we thank you for the freedom of jesus christ oh god we thank you for the freedom of worship oh god we thank you for the stirring oh god hallelujah to your name oh god hallelujah to your way oh god thank you you are the way the truth and the life oh god therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus oh god let the shame off your people right now oh god let the embarrassment off your people oh god let them jump up oh god let them be consumed by your fire oh god lord god we thank you lord god we're not ashamed of you lord god we usher your presence in right now oh god lord god you are the god who sees you see us oh god you see us in our worst oh god you see us at our best oh god lord god thank you for stepping in because our best is not your best, oh God. Lord God, we thank you for exceedingly right now in the name of Jesus. Exceedingly is our word for you, oh God. And we serve it now in the name of Jesus. Exceedingly now in the name of Jesus. Exceedingly in this house, oh God. Exceedingly and spread the word, oh God. Exceedingly in every seat, oh God. Exceedingly on our jobs, oh God. Exceedingly in our finances, oh God. Exceedingly on our homes, oh God. Exceedingly in our children's lives, oh God. Exceedingly in our marriages, oh God. Exceedingly even in our mess, oh God. Exceedingly in the divorce, oh God. Exceedingly in the miscarriage, oh God. Exceedingly now in the name of Jesus. And we walk in it, oh God. We walk in it by faith, oh God. We thank you for the turnaround, oh God. Lord God, restore us now. Restore our belief. Restore our faith. Restore our minds, oh God. When the enemy comes to attack us, oh God, you build a fence around us, oh God. Like the walls of Jericho, they'll come tumbling down. And Lord God, quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Some of us have been under attack since we're hoping, oh God. Lord God, we don't regret it. We don't regret stepping out for you, oh God. So as the attacks come, oh God, shield us now in the name of Jesus. And give your angels about us, oh God. Lord, send your angels now, oh God. For those who you speak to in dreams, oh God, let them get a revelation, oh God. Don't let them keep the word to themselves, oh God. Help them speak it out, oh God. Help them not be afraid, oh God. Help them use their gifts to help the people, oh God. Lord God, we know that deliverance is on the backside of our stories, oh God. Let us not be ashamed to tell our stories, oh God. Let us not be ashamed to testify the goodness of the Lord, oh God. Lord God, you reign and we receive you now in the name of Jesus. It is so and it shall not be otherwise. We seal it with a praise right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we worship you. You are the keeper. You are the keeper, oh God. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. Even we didn't deserve it, oh God. Thank you for not lifting our hands off of us, oh God. Lord God, thank you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, some of us have more to be grateful for than others, oh God. Lord God, let it touch the next person right now in the name of Jesus. Let the oil flow right now in the name of Jesus. Let the oil touch every person in the house, oh God, in the name of Jesus. If you're not stirred now, oh God, we break it off you right now in the name of Jesus. We break the chains right now in the name of Jesus. Break it off right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, we honor you. Lord God, we adore you. Lord God, we worship you. And we receive it now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. God, we thank you and we honor you. Don't want to let that on our feet as we prepare our hearts for worship on today. God, you're so worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And because he was slain and he got up, we are able to celebrate him on today. So we clap our hands and we bless God for the reason why we are here today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. And happy Resurrection Sunday to everyone. You all look absolutely beautiful on today. We're so glad to have you here in our service. We welcome you to spread the word MC with our pastors, our pastor Archie and Pastor Dana Smith. We're so glad to have you here on this Resurrection Sunday. It's such a wonderful time to be in service. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are just going to step out of our seats and greet somebody. We're going to spread the love. Grab, grab, I'm sorry, I'll grab somebody and hug them and say Happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, y'all. Watch God and believe what he can do. Oh, we want to welcome you. Oh, we want to welcome you. As when we plant the seed, meet the need. Watch God and believe what he can do. Oh, we want to welcome you. Oh, we want to welcome you. As when we plant the seed, meet the need. Watch God and believe what he can do.
spread, we plant the seed, meet the need, watch God and believe what he can do. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to 
another hand clap for our children. They did so well. God works even in our children, amen? These are your church announcements. Next Sunday during worship, a TNT team ministry session will be held in the back. We are asking all teams to attend. Save the date, Harp and Bowl will be at the Harvest Church Friday, April the 26th at 7 p.m. We are asking all to attend and come out and support. Weekly reminder, there is intercessory prayer every Saturday at 10 a.m. All are welcome. If you have any prayer requests, the prayer box is located near the back of the church. Each Wednesday, we have our midweek study at 7 p.m. and worship services every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. As always, you can keep up with all of our upcoming events and details by texting the word SPREAD to 77948. Again, that's the word S-P-R-E-A-D to the number 77948. These are your announcements. I got to be told when to go. Well, grace and peace to each and every one of you. We do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Resurrection Sunday now. I shouldn't have to do a whole lot of pushing and a whole lot of priming. The, 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 the truth of the matter is that we are able to get up because he got up. And because he lives, glory to God, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I know who holds my future. Come on here. Because he lives, he lives, he lives. And I give God praise that his death certificate was a chance for me to live. My, my birth certificate was because he gave his life a ransom for my sin. And for this, I give him praise. Now, if you're grateful to God for his life, come on, would you put your hands together and give him praise? Yeah, come on, I can't hear nobody in here. You ought to bless his holy name. He humbled himself even until the point of death. Therefore, God has given him a name, a name above all names, that at the name Jesus, somebody shout Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and everything on the earth, in the earth and under the earth shall honor him as son of the living God. And for that, we give him praise. Now, everybody is, we, we say hello. We welcome you to this Resurrection Sunday service another opportunity for us to give god glory and to give him praise so good to see each and every one of y'all this sunday y'all look so good turn, turn to somebody next to you and say you look good you look good y'all clean up well amen you clean up well amen now i don't want to listen get out of the system now you've already seen everybody you've already seen everybody's easter fits and all of their nice clothes amen all right so i don't need no distraction we just need to go forward in worship is that all right all right we're gonna go forward in worship well, welcome to spread the word worship center favor north carolina our mission and our mandate is to call the challenge and to change we're gonna call you my walks of life ultimately to challenge your faith and good work and through good worship to see change in you and the people that you're connected to if you worship with us for the very first time we do welcome you into this place if you worship with us online for the first time thank god for you uh, there's a whole lot of places you could worship with across the city of favor we thank god that you chose to be here with us uh, this Sunday afternoon. And for that, we give God glory. All right, just a couple of things I want to do before I have to transition this microphone. First and foremost, let me say thank you to each and every one of you who all participated in last week's Rehoboth weekend. Was it not a blessing for us? Amen. If you participated, I pray that your life was changed. Uh, I pray that God said something to you and did something in this space. It was phenomenal. If you missed it, listen to me. Do not miss it next year. It's going to be bigger and it's going to be better. All right, we are already... Uh, Beginning to think about and plan uh, next year's Rehoboth event, so make sure you make plans to be a part of that. I don't know if they can get the graphic up there, but the graphic is out uh, for RSVPing for information. You can go to our website, www.stwnc.com. There's a tab that says Rehoboth 2025. You put your information in there, and we will keep you up to date on key alerts on where we'll be having it, what we'll be doing, who will be speaking uh, as we move closer. Uh, toward that event this time next year. All right, but thank you to every leader. Thank you to every uh, servant leader, to everyone who served in some sort of area of ministry over this weekend, those who hosted, those who picked up speakers, those who dropped off speakers. I thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you all for those who came out and just participated in worship with us. Again, it was a phenomenal event, and it was thanks to all of the hard work and the labor of the staff and the leaders of Spread the Word North Carolina. Would y'all put your hands together and give God praise for them? Thank you so much. Amen. We do give God praise for them. All right. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to get ready to, to lead us in our giving. Amen. We're going to lead us in our giving. Uh, leading, leading us in our giving. I, I, I looked up a scripture, and I want to read it to you from the message version of the Bible as we prepare our hearts and our minds to give. It is Deuteronomy chapter number 8. 
I want to read just two verses of scripture from the message version of the Bible, verse 17 and verse 18. I like this because it means something to us folks. I'm going to read from the message version of the Bible. Praise God. It's going to mean something to you. The Bible says this. If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all of this all by myself. I'm rich. It's all mine. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all of this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to you, your ancestors, as it is today. The King James Version of that scripture reads, it's, it's your God that gave you the power to create wealth. What, what, what God was speaking to the man of God, to the people of God, was he was saying to them, listen, I'm the one who kept you in the wilderness. I'm the one who brought you out of Egyptian bondage, carried you to the wilderness, fed you when you were hungry, clothed you when you needed clothing. I'm the one who assisted in developing you and, and journeying with you and keeping you and covering you while you were making your way from, from bondage into freedom. And he says, if you get to this space uh, in your life where you look back over where you have been and you look back over where you come from and you look at all that you've amassed and all that you've done, you, you have the tendency in and of yourself to say, I did this. He says, if you, if you, if you don't think hard and long on it, you, you'll begin to give yourself credit for, for something God did for you. And, and I, I believe we live in a time now in 2024 where, where people look at their status as something they accomplished. And, and don't get me wrong here. I, I know you work hard. Glory to God. I know you, you paid attention in school and you, you hit the books at night and you, and you studied and you prepared. And you network, glory to God. You join organizations that help you build relationships. You connect with people. You're articulate, articulate. Yeah, you're good looking. You dress well. Praise God. You smell good. Uh, amen. But the truth of the matter is that it's God's ability that He's given you to make those connections and, and to get that education and, and to build those relationships and, and to study well and to prepare well. It's God keeping His hand on your mind. Because if I had to testify here, the truth of the matter is that I should be somewhere rocking back and forth uh, in a padded room, beating my head against the wall. If it had not been, I wish I had help here. For the Lord who was on my side, God kept His hand on my mind. And when things tried to drive me crazy, and people tried to drive me crazy, and situations tried to drive me crazy, and circumstances tried to drive me crazy, it was nothing but the grace of God. It was nothing but the mercies of God. And it's by his mercies. That's what the Bible says, that we are not consumed. His compassions, they fail not, and his mercies are new every morning. The Bible goes on to say, great is the Lord's faithfulness. And I'm just looking for two people. I'll make three. We can tear this whole church up together that can give God praise for his faithfulness. Hey, hey, for the faithfulness of God. It's because he's been faithful. Look at somebody next to you and say, he's been real faithful to me. Hey, he's been real faithful to me. He's been real faithful to me. You may not drive what you want to drive yet. You may not live where you want to live yet. Hey, you may not have married who you want to marry yet. You may not have the account status that you want yet. I can the prophet status of somebody. It's only a matter of time because God has been faithful to me and his faithfulness endured from generation A to generation F to generation. I've been like preaching here. It's by the grace of God. He says, it's, it's God that has given you the power to create wealth. So you're looking good, you're sitting pretty, you woke up, you got up, you ate up, you dressed up. Praise be God. Some of you got your cars and you drove up. Hey, all chance to give God. He says it's by, it's by God's grace that he gives you the power to be where you are. So here's an opportunity that I'm giving you just to, to sow back into the kingdom. I don't, I don't twist arms, I don't, I don't try to coerce people to give, I give you Bible principles. He says, remember that it was God that helped you get to this place where you have what you have. And as a token of our appreciation, as we, as we honor God in our giving, we make our seed ready, we give it back to him to say that I'm honoring God for what he's done for me. Well, I, don't, I don't know how you want to give or what you want to give, but the Bible says whatever you give, let it be given that's been purposed in your heart. So I want you to make your seed ready. I want you to get your seed together. You can give by way of cash app, give it by a smartphone app. So you can give it on our website, www.stwnc.com. You can also give in each of these or either of these uh, baskets here, giving in sanctuary. Um, but I want you to get your seed together. Hold your seed in your right hand because we believe in giving God what's right and not what's for he's gone. We also make a declaration over our seed. Come on, let's dent our feet. Come on, let's dent our feet. We can already make a declaration over our seed. As we make a declaration over our seed, we make it in faith. We hold our seeds up and we make a declaration over our seed, we make it in faith. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. Get ready to give. Ready, set, read. I declare that every seed and love offering I sow will manifest every blessing you have. I place a demand on my seed and receive every book deal, every business idea, every check doors to me, every scholarship applied for, every loan approved, every medical need met. Every disease cured, marriage is restored, children protected and covered, jobs secured, cars purchased, debt eradicated, promotions on jobs, promotions in school, supernatural favor wherever I tread my feet. According to Joshua 1 and 3 and Deuteronomy 11 and 24, it is so, and it shall not be otherwise. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone sowing into the kingdom this Sunday afternoon. I pray that you would bless their seed, that you would, that you would cause it to be increased, God, 30, 60, and even 100 that as they sow it, God, they sow into good ground and that they shall see harvest. I declare, God, that the that the, the sower shall overtake the reaper, God, in Jesus' name. Yeah, that the sower shall overtake the reaper, God, in Jesus' name, that they'll see a harvest like none other. Do it for them now, in Jesus' name is my prayer. It is so, and it shall not be otherwise. Amen. All right, wherever you're coming from, would y'all come on and let's sow into the kingdom.
Father, we thank you for those who have given. We pray that you would use this for the upbuilding of the kingdom and the spread of the gospel throughout our nations, blessing and expanding in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're getting ready to go higher in worship. I'm not going to prolong the time. I believe our young ladies are prepared to minister. They're getting ready to minister to dance one more time. Our Creative Arts Ministry, our Praising Carlos, they're coming to minister to, uh, to dance one more time. And then we're going to be back to preach from John chapter number uh, 19. If you prepare your, your scripture, John 19, Matthew 28, we are going to use two scriptures and we're going to we're going to push through our message today. I feel good and I feel my help. So I don't, if you want to get with me, get with me. But if not, I'm going to push myself. Glory to God. And I'm going to preach uh, because I just believe that I, I got to do it justice today. Praise God. Because Jesus is alive and well. All right. They're coming. Come on. Would y'all put your hands together and let's give him praise. Well, come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Let's put our hands together and give God praise for he paid it all. We pray for preaching power now. Yes, Lord, that you would anoint my mind, anoint my mouth, anoint my message. 
name of the Lord Jesus. Hand me behind Calvary's cross so that your people see you. And not me. The words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my God and my Redeemer. The illumination now, God, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. John chapter number 19. And I'm hastening. Uh, I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. I know some of y'all are hungry. Y'all got hams and turkeys and all kind of things cooking up. And so, John chapter number 19. I want to read a few verses there. And then I want to read in Matthew chapter number 28. If you want to stand, you can stand. I read John chapter number 19, verse number 38. When you have it, would you say amen? Oh, come on. Now, 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 now. we got it on the screen. If anybody got it on the screen, we got it. Praise God. John chapter number 19, verse number 38. The Bible says this. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. Say garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they lay Jesus because of the Jews. Preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 1, says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was as lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to preach. Uh, this Resurrection Sunday from this subject, from tragedy to triumph, Amen. from tragedy to triumph, and for those who need a subtitle, the process of being planted, the process of being planted. All right, let's do some work. The beginning of the plant life cycle starts with the seed, and in each and every seed, whether it be a monocot, a dicot plant seed, carries both a miniature plant called the embryo in the beginning of a root system. The heart outside of the seed is called the seed coat, and it's designed to protect the embryo. When a seed falls on the ground, it needs warm water and light in order to initiate the process of germination. It just makes sense here in a minute. After being, after being planted in the soil for a few days, the seed absorbs water and swells until the seed coat splits. The stem, called the hypocotyl, pushes down through the soil along with the cotyledons and seed leaves. This process is called sprouting. Simultaneously, the tiny root system pushes down and grows, looking for water and for nutrients. And soon, the cotyledons fall off and the first true leaves begin to emerge. It is extremely important that the seed is planted in the right place at the right time in order for the external elements to aid the seed in reaching the process of germination. It's going to bore you before it blesses you. Sometimes, God has to utilize the external elements in your life to apply the right pressure to us as individuals in order to push us to our germination potential. It may feel like, ladies and gentlemen, you've been stepped on. It may feel like you've been stepped over. It may feel like you've been trampled on. It may feel like you've been pushed down. You've been broken. You've been beaten. You've been pushed and pulled. But it simply was God allowing the external elements in your life to do what they do do and push you to your germination potential. He allows pressure in your life to push you to produce. Would you lean on somebody very early and tell them God allows pressure God allows pressure to cause you to produce. 
it, it may feel like you've been buried, ladies and gentlemen, but I've come to declare that you not you have not been buried, you've simply been planted. Because being buried and being planted, they look the same sometimes, they feel the same, and it may be dark, it may be dim, it may not look like things are going to get better. But the, the truth of the matter is whether I'm being planted or whether I'm being buried, the end state and the expectation are different. You've been planted, you have not been buried. Because you get ready to come back greater, you get ready to come back stronger, you get ready to come back wiser, you get ready to come back bigger, you get ready to come back taller and better than you were when you went down. And I don't know who I'm talking to this Sunday afternoon, but I came to remind you very early in this message that what they did with Jesus, that they, they, they simply put him in a place where they provided him an opportunity to come back better. And I don't know who's been, uh, been dealing with this sort of situation in your life where you feel like people cast you down, people casted you away, seem like people cast dirt on you and on your name. But I've learned that you ain't doing nothing until dirt starts showing up. Because when dirt starts showing up in your life, it starts putting pressure on the outside of you so that you can tap into what God put on the inside of you. Jeremiah says it like this, that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, glory to God. And, and, and I ordained you to be something. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I came to tell you that there's something on the inside of you. God is looking to get on the outside of you. And before he gets it out of you, he'll allow the pressure yeah, of the elements early on in your life to push you to potential. But here it is. We, 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 we're, we're looking at now over this resurrection week, and we've been in process. We've looked at the place. We've looked at the person. We've looked at the prophecy and the pleasure, the pain and the agony of the cross and the pardon. But then we get to this place in John chapter number 19 where he's been crucified. Y'all talked about this Friday where he's been crucified and he's, he's now dead. But the Bible says that they begin to prepare his body. And I know I'm coming to get him up, but I got to put him down for you uh, for you to understand the real intent of this message they begin to prepare his body. They begin to prepare his body. The Bible says that 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 Nicodemus, uh, they go to to Pilate and say, "Listen, can we have his body?" The Bible says two men who have been secretly following Jesus. They have been secretly following his ministry, secretly following his miracles, and now they've arrived on the scene out of hiding and out of shadows, and they come to see seemingly right their wrong or to set the record straight. They come to say, listen, uh, g give us Jesus' body because well, I understand why he was alive. We didn't have a whole lot to do with him. We didn't publicly let uh, everybody know that we were supporting him or, or following him. But, but, but now what I want to do is I want to prepare his body for burial. And I've come to pull somebody into a space to set the record straight that for God I'll live and for God I'll die. But you gotta be real careful ladies and gentlemen of those who love you in secret but disown you in public I don't know who I'm talking to early on but 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 Nicodemus had a, had a case of I love Jesus privately y'all remember John chapter number three Bible tells us Nicodemus came to Jesus at night time he came under the cover of night so that people wouldn't see his public testimony of who Jesus was he loved him in private but he stayed away from him in public but you have to watch people in your circle you got to watch people in your in your area you gotta watch who you connect with because people will love you privately and disown you publicly Oh, y'all ain't never experienced that. Maybe that was just me. They, they, they'll hype you up. Say, yeah, you, you're doing this well. You're doing that well in private conversations. But when it comes time to publicly support you, come on here. When it comes time to show up at your event, when it comes time to buy your merchandise, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. When it comes time to buy your book or, or buy your product, when it comes time to just show up, because this is what I've learned, support is free. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. All I got to do is show up. Sometimes people don't want you your money they want your support y'all ain't talking to me yet I said sometimes people are not there oh, everybody ain't out to get you come on here everybody's not out to, to to get into your pockets some people just want you simply to see their vision see their dream and buy in somebody say buy in all you got to do is show up but you got to be careful those people who say yeah you're doing real well in private but when it comes time of publicly to support you, they are nowhere to be found. So here it is now. They show up to say, look, we need Jesus' body. We want to prepare him. God will raise and use the enemy to plant you and start in you a garden process. He utilizes now Nicodemus to, to pull Jesus down and prepare his body to go into the same place, watch this, where dominion was lost at. Let me teach here. You, you, you remember in Genesis, it started in a garden.
Whew. Yeah, it was it was it was Adam and it was Eve and, and they were deceived by something that got inside of their ear. Let me pause here and preach to you. This is a season of your life where you need to guard who has access to your ear. You, 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 need to, you need to be real careful of, of who you lend your ear to, who you allow to whisper, who you allow to, uh, to speak into, who you allow to, who you give audience to. Because individuals have the ability to deceive you simply by their words. And everybody don't have your best interest at heart. I know you think that they were just trying to say this or they were just trying to warn you here. I have found people that disguise themselves as a warning simply to get you to agree with them not liking somebody that they ain't really got no reason for not liking. Oh, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you need to hear what I'm saying to you. People will try to get you on their side and make you dislike like people that you don't have no real reason to dislike and it's a it's an attack of the enemy watch this to keep you out of whom God sent in your life wow. yeah God will send you somebody and just before that person shows up you you somebody will come to you and say you know so and so oh she did this and this and, and she really did that and, and when I when we were when we he did this and and, and and they'll try to taint your perspective before you even have time to form an opinion about somebody God sent to bless you. <laughs> they lost dominion in the garden because of what they gave ear to. Jesus passes through Gethsemane. We talked about this a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, right? And we talked about the painful way and how God passes through Gethsemane's garden and says, not my will, but thy will be done. Goes through that garden process. But what I found interesting is that on the backside of his crucifixion, the Bible says they take his body down and they begin to prepare it to put back into, watch me, a garden. That's what John chapter number 19 says, that they hold out a, a grave inside of a garden because this is a space where God will win back the dominion that they lost in the garden in Genesis chapter number three. So what they do, first of all, is they, they, they begin to take him and they case him. They, they begin to, 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 to form a hard shell around him so that he becomes a seed. They anoint and they wrap, they wrap his body in linen. Nicodemus and Joseph prepare an anointing oil for Jesus' body. It's comprised of myrrh and aloe. The Jews were accustomed to using myrrh and aloes and, and other aromatics in, in large quantities when they buried the dead. When they were uh, not regularly embalmed, it was a a long and tedious process they enclosed spices in the folds of the linen and they layered the linen wrap by wrap strip by strip around the body spices were sometimes used in such quantities to form a heap or a bed on which the dead body would lay in it became sort of like a cocoon for the dead body it became watch this sort of like a seed casing yeah that forms around Jesus's body and now that they've cased and carried the seed they put him in a place where where the elements the natural elements around him would seem he's being buried but simply he's being planted they prepared his body but then they cultivate the ground. Nicodemus and Joseph uh, take Jesus to the grave, which was frowned upon because the Jews believed that coming into contact with graves would contract a ceremonial pollution that Christ's resurrection freed us from. They, they, they were not to come into contact with dead things or, or, or graves. But Nicodemus and Joseph, they, they take chance here because of what Jesus told them that he was going to do. He says, if you can kill this temple or you can destroy this temple, but give it three days. Yeah. And I will rebuild it again. What Jesus was saying is that after this process of my passion goes forward, after I'm crucified on Calvary's cross, it's only a matter of time. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I prophesy to you that it's only a matter of time in your life. That if God did it in three days, you can do, he can do it for you in three minutes. Yeah. If he did it in three days he can do it for you in three hours it's simply a matter of time that no matter how beat down and broken you feel now no matter how uh, uh, dead and dying you feel like your situation is it's simply a matter of screaming that 
somebody. Say it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. God has the ability to pull things back from the dead. We learned this last week. We talked about John chapter number 11 where Jesus goes to the, to the throne and he says, listen, uh, 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 he tells his, his friend to come out of the grave, Mary and Martha. He says, listen, watch this Lazarus come forth. God has the ability to resurrect dead things in your life. And so I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel like preaching here to tell somebody, I don't care what your situation looks like. God has the ability to turn it around. I wish somebody would jump up and turn around in your life. It's simply a matter of time before God turns it in my favor. It's simply a matter of time before it starts working for my good. God says, if you give me three days, three days, three days, you can tear it down and I'll pick it up again. They come into contact with the grave. The Bible says it was a new grave. Yeah, it was a it was a, a virgin grave, if you will, because Christ was an uncommon man. It was fitting for him to be buried in an uncommon place. He was not born from the dust as man was. Therefore, he would not be placed back into the dust as we are, but would emerge from a virgin tomb. Yeah, as he did when he arrived in this world. It was symbolic in the point that he came through a virgin womb and therefore he would return from the dead watch me through a virgin tomb yeah and I'm, I'm glad I heard my brother say this last week that his tomb yeah was your womb glory to God and it was only a matter of time before he got up that you have the ability to get up and God allows him to come through a place that was untainted and untarnished but it would affirm the truth of his resurrection so that others could not say it wasn't him that rose rather some other that got up at the same time or that it was not by his own divine power that he got up or it was by the power of some other. He allowed, uh, God allowed Jesus to go into this virgin tomb as an affirmation that you couldn't say it was somebody else that was buried in there with him that got up. No. But Matthew 27, 28 says listen, he tells Mary at the tomb, come see the place. Yeah. Where the Lord, the one that was crucified for everybody to see, the one that was wrapped by Joseph and Nicodemus placed in the tomb who no, no one had ever been buried in. Come watch that place. Yeah. Where he got up from the dead. It affirms his resurrection. And this is the crux of our Christianity. This is what differs us from every other religion. Yeah. Is that we serve a God. Yeah. That although he died publicly, he still lives publicly. I wish I had help here. This is the crux of, of what we believe is that I serve a God that I don't have to carry around my neck. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't got to get a necklace made of my God and put them on my body. I don't got to tattoo him on my arm or tattoo him on my feet. The truth of the matter is I don't serve a God I got to carry. I serve a God that carries me. I wish I had help here. I serve a God that is still alive and well. I serve a God that took head, death and hell and keys. Glory to God. From the grave, he is alive and well. And Muhammad, yeah, he died again. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of the other religions that have some sort of deity have de died and gone on. But the truth of the matter is that I serve a living God, a living Savior. And I know that may not be your experience, and you may not believe the same way I believe, but one thing I know, I wish I had preaching help here, one thing that you can't take from me is my own experience with God. Yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah. You may be able to deny him for you, but you'll never be able to rob me of what I know he's done for me. For I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, very deeply stained with in, seeking to rise no more but the master yeah of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters glory to God he looked at me now save it he picked me up I wish I had help here he turned me around he placed my feet on solid ground when I look back over my life and see where I've come from it had to be the grace of God I know some of y'all were born in church I know some of y'all came out of your mama's womb speaking in tongues but some places some people he had to go out far to find them. He found some of y'all in nightclubs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He found some of y'all in strip club. I wish I had help here. He found some of y'all in drug houses. He found some of y'all in crack houses. He found some of y'all on the block. I wish I had help here. He found some people at the bar. But thanks be unto God. I don't care where he found you at. You want to give God praise that he found you. I once was lost. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But now I'm found. It was God's amazing grace. And for this we give him praise. Oh yeah, I feel good now. It was a new grave. They cultivated the ground. Yeah, they cased the seed. They cultivated the ground. But then what they, this is where they messed up at, y'all. Watch me. This is where they messed up at. They cased them in a seed. They, 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 they cultivated the ground. But then they had to nerve, watch this, to cover the ground. Yeah. Glory to God. Watch me here. Because you can dig up the ground, and you can dig up a hole, and you can put a seed in the ground. But it's not until, I'm where my green thumbs at. It's not until you take that soil, glory to God, and you put that soil back into the ground. And you put some pressure down there. And you begin to pat it, yeah. And you begin to water it, glory to God. And you begin to pat it. 
had it and you begin to watch some of y'all begin to pray and y'all start tapping the ground and you say God do what you gonna do let the elements of the earth uh, bring about a process in your life but they close the ground in order to ensure that his body was not taken in order to ensure I'm coming for you that his body was not taken or that a lie would not be developed among the Jews, the Roman leaders required a large stone be rolled and shut up the, the front of the grave. The Roman leaders required that a large stone be rolled to shut the, the life-bearing seed of Jesus' body in the grave. They, they closed the ground, which furthered the process of pushing Christ to the point of explosion up and out of the ground. They, they, they really had no idea that they were that they were they were continuing a process that would push Jesus to his blooming season. And here's where I come to preach to you. People have no idea that they're completing the process of pushing you to your next. Yeah, that you, you, you don't realize this. But if Judas knew, glory to God, that his betrayal of Jesus would simply cause Jesus to find success, he might not have betrayed him. So you got to thank God for those who have betrayed you in your life. You got to learn to give God praise for people that walk off on you. You got to learn to give God glory for people that turn their back on you because they had no idea that they were just ending the process that would push you further into your next. They didn't know that, that God was utilizing them as a way of bringing you higher in your life. They, they didn't know that, that, that God was simply using them to elevate you in the next season of your life. They covered the ground and then they left it. The Bible tells us in John chapter number 19 that they asked Pilate to put a guard outside of the grave. They said, listen, Jesus was talking about he going he to resurrect in three days. He talked about he was going to come back. And he was going to come back from the dead. So in order to alleviate uh, this, this, this mass chaos, in order to alleviate this, uh, this fake news, what we want to do, glory to God, what we want to do is we want to put a guard outside of the tomb and we want to guard it so that no one can steal Jesus's body and declare that he was resurrected I feel my help coming now I said that we want to put a guard outside so that no one can steal his body and declare he was resurrected so Pilate takes it a step further and he puts a guard outside the grave and he puts a signet ring glory to God on the outside of the stone what the Bible would have us know is that the stone was so big yeah that it could not be moved by one man Thank you yet. I said it could not be moved by one man. It took a team of soldiers to maneuver this boulder into the front of the tomb. But the Bible says that at the end of John chapter number 19, that, 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 that the soldiers were there and they watched guard overnight. But if you flip over into the 20th chapter of John, or you flip across to our text in Matthew chapter number 28, the Bible said that the morning came, glory to God, that the sun began to shine. And, and then that there was something unusual yeah, about, the, about the place where they had laid Jesus' body. There was something strange, glory to God, that had happened at this tomb. He left a guard like he at the tomb, but it seems as if the guard missed and did not see the angel of the hey, the angel of the Lord show up and roll the stone away. Glory be to God. The Bible says that as morning came, that the angels rolled the stone away. The Bible says that the ground began to shake so much that the car lost focus and, and did not realize what was going on in their life. The Bible says that Mary, Mary and Martha showed up in the tomb and they began to begin to, to be discouraged because they came looking for one thing and they did not find it. Have you ever been there? Glory to God. But you came looking for God to do something for you, but it seemed like he left you hanging. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Have you ever been there where you came asking God to do this for you or asking God to do that for you, but it seemed like God picked up the phone and left you on hold. Have you ever been there? Yes, Lord, where you came praying for something and fasting for something and declaring something and you did not see it the way God thought you would see it. You've been discouraged. You've been upset. You've been angry. Some of y'all been frustrated with God, but God told me to tell you it's getting ready to come another way. Hey, I wish I had help here. He says it's getting ready to come another way. You've been looking for it to come by way of the tomb. You've been looking for it to still be there. You've been looking for it the way you want to see it. But if you keep reading, the Bible says that just as they got sad, Jesus steps onto the scene and he says, why are you weeping? Yeah. He says, why are you crying? Did not I tell you, y'all ain't saying nothing to me, did not I tell you that it was going to be death and burial? But if you just gave me some time, I was going to come another way. And I prophesy to you that if you ain't seen it yet, it's because God is coming another way. Scream at somebody say it's coming another way. 
It's coming another way. It's coming another way. Hey, it's coming another way. I was on the colors, and it was tragedy on Friday night. Yeah, and it was tragedy on Saturday morning, and it was tragedy on Saturday night. But early, glory be to God, early on Sunday morning, it was no more tragedy. It was no more tears cry. There was no more pain. There was no more suffering. There was no more struggle. There was no more issue. But the Bible tells us, don't look for him there, for he has risen. And the Bible tells us, and he rose with all power. And he had triumph over tragedy. He had triumph over death. He had triumph over disease. He had triumph over sickness. He had triumph over illness. He had triumph over hell. He had triumph over death. He had triumph over the king. He says, oh death, where is your sting? Hey, and grave, where is your victory? But the Bible comes to tell us that Jesus rose from the dead with all power in his hand. He was not buried. Glory be to God. But the Bible tells us that he did not die at their hands. But he laid down his life. And because he laid down his life, I have the ability to pick up mine. And you want to give God praise there. Because you are still living by the grace of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you are a believer in here and you're going to live forever, you want to throw your hands up. Because the truth of the matter is, everything that God does, all he does is win. Every time I, every time my hands come up, all I do is win. When I praise him with my hands, I win. When I lift my hands on high, I win. I will not lose. I've got triumph in my life. I've got triumph in my life. I've got victory in my life. For I am more than a conqueror. For in him I live. And I move. And I have my being. I am, yeah, greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. I just showed up this Sunday on Resurrection Sunday to declare to you that he's getting ready to get better. You get ready to come back bigger. This is your comeback season. Scream back somebody say, come back, come back. Oh yeah, come on, say, come back, come back. Come on, say, come back, come back. He tried to take you out, but you get ready to come back. He tried to knock you out, but you get ready to come back. He tried to kill you, but you get ready to come back. He tried to stop you, but you get ready to come back. This is the season of the comeback. Now that you get ready to come back and come up, it's a come up in your come up in your shire. It's a come up in your life. I'm coming back and I'm coming up. Somebody say, come up, come up, come up. Listen. Oh, you get ready to come back. Oh, I feel that I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back. They tried to count you out, but you coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to write you off, but you get ready to come back. You thought it was gonna take you out, but you're getting ready to come back. Yeah, you lost it, but you get ready to come back. Yeah, you did it, but you don't define you get ready to come back. Hey, glory to God. Yeah, get ready to come back, coming back. Because he came back, I'm coming back. Because he came back, I'm coming back. Oh, because he came back, I'm coming back. I have the ability to be, hey, everything that he says I will be. This is why I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my coming. I'm blessed in my going. I'm above only, glory to God, and not beneath. I'm the lender, hey, and not the borrower. And if it isn't working in my favor now, give me a little bit more time. Because we know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. This is your comeback season. Now prophesy, you're getting ready to come back better than you've ever been before. I got four minutes, I'm done. Listen. It's the process of being planted. They thought they had killed him. They thought they had taken him out. But they initiated a process that would move everyone from tragedy into victory. <laughs> I don't know who this is for, but... God, God wanted me to remind you that it's, it's a process. It might look tragic now. But if God be for you, <laughs> who can stand against you? Paul writes that in the, in the, in the common Greek. But what he essentially says in 21st century language in 2024 is if God got your back who, who want to try and pull up if, if, if God is on your side don't, don't, nobody want none matter 
This was indication of a decisive victory. It was decisive. Made public spectacle for the world. Jesus comes back and begins showing himself in what the Bible calls infallible proofs. What he says is, Jesus shows himself to the very ones that saw him crucified. Which tells and teaches us ought to encourage us not to walk solely by what you see. You saw me crucified. But then you saw me come through the wall without opening the door. You saw me crucified. But now you see the, the nail prints in my hand and the and the spear in my side. You saw me crucified. Now you see me walking the Emmaus Road and, and unveiling that everything you've experienced simply was God's plan to bring about an expected end in your life. came to tell you all of your life if he allowed it he plans to use it it's all gonna make sense sooner or later it seems like Nothing is making sense. Nothing is adding up. Nothing is connecting. I don't know why God allowed this. Why God allowed that? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? God says it's all going to make sense. In due time, it's all going to make sense. It's going to make sense out of it all. Don't walk by what you see. We move through the eyes of faith. I call those things that are not as though they are. What I do is I see it one way and I declare it another way. I wish I had help here. I know what I see and this is our belief is that inside of what you say fact is there is truth. Faith does not deny fact. It simply looks at fact and says, I choose to look at truth. And truth is a man. Woo! Yabando Shai. He's a man. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So whose report will you believe? triumph from tragedy to triumph I don't know where you are on the spectrum but it may be sad now God has a way of causing that thing to turn God has a way of flipping the script God has a way of turning the table and it's just a matter of time hear me by the spirit of God it's only a matter of time before God moves you from what has been traumatic what has been traumatizing from what has been tragedy into giving you victory over everything. He snatched his back. Everything that was lost. Ephesians 4 says he gave gifts that he has dispersed out. Everything, watch this, he took back from the enemy. So you have the ability to claim back things you thought the enemy stole from you. It's only encouraging. It's only a matter of time. His resurrection was an indication to us that it is not over. And if you haven't seen victory, it's not over. 
because it all ends in victory for the believer. I speak that over your life. It's not over yet. And someone came on the brink of walking away from the Lord. Said, I'm going to give this one more chance. This Jesus thing. But if it don't work out, if God don't show up this time, if, if God doesn't do it for me this time, I'm walking away. God says, I hear you. He says, I see you. But this time, you're doing it with me. So, Father, I pray for the one on the brink of walking away. And I declare that you're seizing their footsteps in Jesus' name. That they're not walking away. They're walking into, glory to God, what it is that you have for them. I declare that, God, you're giving them the strength. Keep pressing. Hey, to keep pushing and to keep going. And that this time, glory to God, it will be different in Jesus' name. It is so. Yeah. And it shall not be otherwise. If that's you, that was you. Can I just put your hand up? I put you on the spot. I just want to lay my hands on you. That's you. You're on the brink of walking away from God. Just slip your hand up. I know you're here. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. There may be somebody here who doesn't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, we invite you to come. We invite you to connect here. Because let us lead it to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ raised from the dead that you shall be saved. With the heart, you believe it. The mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you need a relationship with God, we invite you to come. If you say in the need of prayer, we invite you to come. We'll connect our faith with your faith. And we will bombard heaven together. That's you. If you need prayer this Sunday afternoon, we invite you to come. A third invitation for somebody here in the city who doesn't have a church home, you need a place to connect to. You need a voice over your life. We invite you to connect here until God should lead you elsewhere. Who's the wheel? The doors are on the Lord's house are now open. Will you come? Come on, we celebrate those who come. Who's the wheel? The Lord's house are now open. Will you come? She said she was going to come, but she wasn't coming for herself. She was coming for her son. So his son, her son has been wrestling, been dealing with something. This is your son? Oh, well, praise be to God. Amen. Come on. We're going to pray with them. Come on, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you even now for this. Our dear brother and our son, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for the gift that he is. Praise God. I thank you, Lord, now for him as a vessel, as a son. And as we stand now in partnership with him, as we stand in connection with him, we thank you for every struggle, every issue, every challenge, and every problem. For they now got our opportunities for your divine hand to move in his life. We thank you for the circumstances being the way that they are. And we declare even now that circumstances are shifting. Hey, in Jesus' name, I declare now, God, that every obstacle and every roadblock is being destroyed in Jesus' name. That you're creating and clearing a path. Hey, by the ocean. That you're creating a path now, God, for him to walk the way that you would have him walk. Move the way that you would have him move. Go, yeah, the way that you would have him go. And I declare now, God, strength even until this your son. God, strength, God, that's pushing him. For I call forth the grace that he carries in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not just to play God, but to prosper. Not just to play God, but purpose. Not just to play, but to produce in Jesus' name. I thank you that more is coming out of him. Yeah, God, in Jesus' name. I thank you that it has not been for naught. But every test and every struggle, every situation has been to produce. And I prophesy even over him now that the pressure is only allowing, causing him to produce more in this season of his life. Father, I come against every attack of the enemy, every trick, every trick that he can hear the way he would have him hear. He needs 
Uh, yes, God, give him the grace he needs. And I pray that the fire would be rekindled the way you would have it to be rekindled. In Jesus' name, we stand in the gap and we snatch him back. It is so and it shall not be otherwise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, would you give God praise for him? We got, I have three, come on, that, that want to connect with spread. Come on, let's give God praise for them. We bless God for those that uh, that come to connect. Uh, D, D has been, been dating us for a little bit. Y'all see him uh, sneak in and, and sneak out. Uh, he's been he's been here on Sundays. He's been here on Wednesdays. Um, and I had a conversation with him to say, hey, look, allow the Lord to lead you. I know he was in the process of, of looking for a place to connect, uh, looking for a church home. I don't like to rush people into connecting with bodies of believers because you have to believe you've been called. You have to believe you've been sent to a house in order for you to yield to that house and receive everything from that house that, that God has for you. So we're honored to have you, man. We look forward to you getting you coming in, uh, connecting with us and getting busy. Um, Kayla's been here. She's been dating us, too. She's been here for a few times. Um, and so we're looking forward to her connecting. And then give me your name. Our niece is from Favor, and she's coming to connect with us this, this Sunday as well. So I, I praise God for them. I thank God for y'all connecting. And this is my this will be my, my, my admonition to you or my encouragement to you would be don't come and sit. Don't come be idle. Come get busy because you're going to get out of what you put in, right? You're going to reap the blessing and the benefit of being here on Wednesday and being here on Sunday and getting involved with Emerge and getting involved with serving leaders and finding a ministry to, to, to connect to uh, and to and to be a part of. We promise to be a covering. Um, and we'll, we continue to pray for those that we leave, serve those that we leave. Uh, but we look forward to you all being here and being a part of what God's going to do in the next season of our lives. And so we declare that God's ready to do something new for you because of your new connection with us. Is that all right, Sprint? Come on, let's show them some love one more time. Glad to have you. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. slip your hand up, they'll make sure that you, you get a communion cup. I'm going to do communion. Praise God. Kira, how do you know her? That's your sister. There's a, do you write? There's a grace for writing on you. I don't know where you are in the in the publishing process. But the Lord says, write. Don't just write for the sake of writing. Write with intentionality to publish and to produce. <laughs> and the enemy will probably, glory to God, the enemy probably will make you feel like what you're writing is, is not valuable. Glory to God. There, there, was a, there was a season in your life where you wrote and you wrote and you wrote, and it seemed like maybe someone read what you wrote and, and, and devalued it. It was an attack of the enemy. The Lord told me to tell you, listen, write. I've told you to write. And sometimes we can feel distracted and become disobedient. You hear what I'm saying to you? from doing what it is we know God instructed us to do. But there is a strong grace, hear me, a strong grace for the pen in your hand. <laughs> and it's not just, it's not just, uh, I see, I sense, I sense women book, but, but I also sense journals, glory to God. I feel the Lord, yeah, I feel the Lord putting a grace on you, not just to write for women, but to write across the spectrum for men and
men for children. Glory to God. There's a journal coming out of you. Hey. Yamanso, Rebe, Ayamandio Shaya. There's a there's a journal, a Bible journal coming out of you. This is the Lord sent me to remind you. Father, in Jesus' name, give her the pen of a ready writer. A fresh grace. Hey, a fresh grace. God rekindled the fire. And we cancel the voice of the enemy in her ear that would make her feel like what she's producing is devalued in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would raise uh, the self-value, the self-worth of what it is that is on the inside of her. I pray for a fresh anointing, a fresh wind now, God, in her life. And that you would uh, emphasize and back everything that she puts her hand to paper to write. God, carry it to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west in the name of Jesus. Hey, yes, Lord. And I declare that there is a, 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 a top-tier publishing company, glory to God, that will reach out to her. Hey, that she won't have to go looking for it, but it will come to find her. Because of her obedience this day, now God give her the strength that she needs to be obedient to you. In the seasons, God, in the night seasons when she has to write, in the early morning when she has to write, Father, let her journal, let her write, let her produce, and put a weight, hey, a weight on everything that she pulls out of her that you pull out of her in Jesus' name. Do you sing? Glory to God. The Lord says you're going to write songs. You may not sing them. But there's a, there's a songwriting grace. And you showed up here today simply for the Lord to remind you of that. Do, don't stop. Go back and pick up what you wrote before that you set on the side, that you put on the shelf, that you said, this is nothing. It doesn't matter. I'm going to move on. I'm going to find another goal, find another uh, way. I'm going to find another path. The Lord says, no, this is the path that you're on. It is so, and it shall not be otherwise. We thank you for it even now in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for God in her life. Come on, celebrate. Now, now if it was you I was talking to, you'd be happy. Selfish Christians, boy, I tell y'all. Amen. If you did not get a communion cup, please lift your hand up. Everybody should have one now. Amen. All right, we're getting ready to participate in the Lord's Supper. As a reminder, as a token, uh, the Bible says that Jesus tells the disciples that as, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It's a, it's a reminder of the sacrifice that, and that God made in his, in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Paul says that uh, sometimes there were people that had taken it of ill will and of ill manner, and they have fallen sick, even uh, fallen asleep. So, Father, in Jesus' name, ready our hearts to receive the right way. As we participate in the Lord's Supper today, it's a reminder to us of the sacrifice that you made. And we thank you now that you're still alive and well. That your body was broken for us, but that your blood cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness, from all of our sickness, and everything that's wrong in our blood. Thanks be to God that your blood makes right in Jesus' name. Come on, would you take the bread? The night that our Lord God was betrayed, the Bible says that he sat around the table with his disciples, having taken bread, he blessed it. And then he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, This is my body, which is being broken for you. Let's all break it together. On the same night, the same man, having taken a cup, he stopped. He said, This is my blood that's being shed for you. It's the blood of the new covenant, not the remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there cannot be the remission of sin. Let's all take and drink together. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It is so. It should not be otherwise. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're done. We're transitioning. Praise God. Stung y'all like it stung him. It's all right. Praise be to God. Amen. A reminder, glory to God, of what he had to go through. Praise be to God. Amen. Well, listen, happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter Sunday. As y'all go hunt eggs and, and eat and, and fellowship, just remember um, why we celebrate, what we celebrate in the life of the believer. That this is a moment in time where we give God praise for his death, his burial his resurrection, his ascension, 
and soon to be his second coming. I'm looking for the Lord to come back. I know there was a time when old church used to stay. You got to stay ready, always looking for the Lord's return. He's coming back, and he's coming back to take church without spot and without wrinkle. And so we give God praise for that. If you're saved and you're sanctified, would you put your hands together and give God praise? Amen. If you worship with us for the very first time, welcome. Thank you for being here. Our worship service would not have been what it was without you. And we give God praise for you. We pray that you come back and that you worship with us here in the near future. Let us all look to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you for who you are. We thank you for this space and this moment in time. We thank you for your power and for your presence now, God, in this place. Now, God, as we leave this place, and we go down from your presence. We pray that you go with us and keep us, God. Dispatch angels, get them charge of our vehicles. Help us arrive at our place of destination to arrive finally the way that we left it. Father, bless these individuals and the families at the sound of my voice. Continue to cover them and watch between them, God, until we should meet again. We thank you for your word, God, that we are moving from tragedy to triumph in Jesus' name. And it's only a matter of time before we see victory manifest in our life. And we take it by faith. For your word declares that the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, but the violent take it by force. We take it back now, God, in Jesus' name. Cover us, O God, until we should be again. We bless you, we honor you, and we love you. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with each and every one of y'all now, henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God say Amen. All right, say Amen like you mean it. All right, hope somebody tell me glad you found them in the house of the Lord.